What's up, everybody? Welcome to the 25th episode of the Investing Penguin. Covered calls and cash-secured puts. A quick shout-out to our newest subscribers, Rude Doggy Dog, Mammy Mammy, and Ethan1145. Wow, so many new subscribers. Did I miss anyone? Let me know in the comments below. And thank you for subscribing to the channel. And for everyone else, hit that subscribe button. If you are new to my channel, stick around as I provide the mid-month breakdown for the month of January, and stick around till the end as I share some interesting facts about supply-side economics. Wow, there's a word that I haven't heard since Ronald Reagan's presidency. And please hit all those buttons, Sus subscribe, like, and share. It's supposed to help all my YouTube algorithms. And uh, especially you Canucks out there, uh, hey there. My YouTube analytics says uh, you Canucks are watching my videos after the hockey game there. So slap shot that there subscribe button. But seriously, if you appreciate these videos, then please subscribe and share with your investment friends. And for those of you who don't know me, I am the Penguin. And in this video, I provide the mid-month breakdown for the month of January. And OMG, January is tanking. And some investors are running scared. Remember, when you see the numbers, keep in mind, I like to keep these videos simple, easy to understand with relevant, straight to the point information. There is, there is an acronym called KISS, K-I-S-S, -S, keep it simple, stupid. And that's how I like to live my life. Finally, I'm here to show you all the juicy details for free. I'm not here to sell you anything. There are no subscription fees like those other investment channels. So let's jump into this. Time's a wasting. So turn on the air compressor. This market is ready to implode. So let's take a look at the graphs for January. Here is the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and we are down, tanking. Now that the New Year's Eve boos and blunts have worn off, reality is starting to set in. Inflation fears, interest rate hikes, Biden's politics. I think everyone knows 2022 is going to be a challenging year, which is an even better reason to be selling covered calls and cash secured puts. Here is the NASDAQ composite. Tech stocks are getting a good old fashioned spanking. Here is the S&P 500. Same thing here, down in January. Here is Netflix. They dropped 100 points after hours yesterday. I'm not a chart master, but looks like Netflix was out of control. Here is Peloton. They're done. Stick a fork in them. Trading halted the other day. Peloton stopped production of their bikes. Look at the chart during COVID. This is when retail investors buy in the news and get slaughtered like sheep. Here is NVIDIA. On January 5th, Kramer said he had a nice conversation with the CEO of NVIDIA, and then Kramer announced a buy on the stock that same day. Hmm, go figure. You know, Kramer has to be all buddy-buddy with these CEOs, so they will come on his show and take softball questions. Now, NVIDIA is a pretty good company, but the stock has been pumped up, and now the stock is tanking. So here are my stocks that are on. If you have rolled dice in a craps game before, then you understand the on button. Intel. I've sold covered calls and sold cash secured puts in January. I think Intel is going to turn a corner in 2022. Kinder Morgan. I've owned Kinder Morgan since June of 2021 and sold covered calls in January. JP Morgan. I'm back in JP Morgan and I've sold covered calls and cash secured puts in January. JP Morgan dropped just over 10% right after earnings, but I'm staying with JP Morgan. Pfizer. I bought Pfizer and sold covered calls in January. Same with Citigroup. I bought Citigroup and sold covered calls in January. 3M. I have sold covered calls and cash secured puts in January. Nucor. I sold cash secured puts and then the stock tanked right past my strike price. Raytheon, my shares hit the strike price, were assigned, goes into the books as a win. Same for Phillips 66, my shares hit the strike price, were assigned, goes in the books as a win. 
So here are my stocks that are off, sitting on the sideline and not collecting any premium because the trading price is too far below my purchase price. So the premium is worthless. I just have to hold, collect the dividend, and wait for the stocks to recover higher so I can start selling covered calls again. This is not what you want, but at least you can collect dividends. So let's review some January trades in greater detail. So after buying 3M for 175 via the cash secured put trade, I immediately started writing covered calls. This is also known as the wheel strategy. On December 20th, I sold one covered call contract for $1.34 for the January 7th expiration in the 177.50 strike price. I collected a premium of $133.34. On Friday, January 7th, 3M closed above 177.50 a share. So the following Monday, my 100 shares of 3M were sold at 177.50 a share. I made a profit of $383.24 for 18 days, which is a 44.4% annualized return. And that's a great return. So I continued my success with 3M and decided to rinse and repeat. I decided to sell another cash secured put and I had the potential to buy 300 shares of 3M at 170 a share. On January 10th, 3M was trading at 177.40 a share. I sold three cash secured put contracts for $1.65 for the January 28th expiration and the 170 strike price. This is a deep out of the money strike price, so I'm taking smaller premium but getting bigger downside protection. I collected a premium of $493.01, which equates to a 19.6% annualized return. Now, if 3M closes below 170 a share on January 28th, I'm buying those shares at a deep discount, which is fine since I've owned 3M before and I'm interested in owning 3M again to start writing covered calls. And if on January 28th, 3M closes above 170 a share, the option will expire worthless and I will still make a profit of $493.01 for 18 days, which is a 19.6% annualized return. And that is an okay return. So let's review another covered call trade in January. I decided to buy 500 shares of Citigroup and write a covered call. I'm expecting to make a 48.3% return on my money. So check this out. On January 18th, I bought 500 shares of Citigroup at 65.59 a share. That same day, I sold five covered call contracts for $1.05 for the February 18th expiration in the 67.50 strike price. I collected a premium of $521.69. If on Friday, February 18th, Citigroup closes above 67.50 a share, then on the following Monday, my 500 shares of Citigroup will sell at $67.50 a share. I'm expecting to make a profit of $1,476.24 for 34 days, which will be a 48.3% annualized return. Plus, I will be capturing the dividend payment of $255. That's the dividend capture strategy. You write the covered call so you can also capture the ex-dividend date and capture that dividend payment. Now, what if Citigroup stock does nothing? It just hangs around the $65 a share stock price and never breaks above my strike price of $67.50 a share. Well, then I keep the shares, I rinse and repeat, and I write the same covered call again and keep collecting premium. Rinse and repeat, baby. So I had new core on my radar screen, and when it dipped to $111 a share, I decided to sell a cash secured put. I had the potential to buy 200 shares of Nucor at 107 a share. On January 14th, Nucor was trading at 111.22 a share. I sold two cash secured put contracts for $2.35 for the January 28th expiration in the 107 strike price. In hindsight, I should have taken a deeper out of the money strike price since Nucor blew past my strike price during this market slide. Well, anyways, I collected a premium of $468.68, which equates to a 57.1% annualized return. Now, if Nucor closes below 107 a share on January 28th, I'm buying those shares at a discount, but not really a discount because Nucor blew past my strike price. I might be in trouble on this trade. And if on January 28th, Nucor closes above 107 a share, 
the option will expire worthless and they will still make a profit of $468.68 for 18 days, which is a 57.1% annualized return. In hindsight, I should have taken a lower annualized return in exchange for a lower strike price. So these are all the stocks that are on the radar screen. Stocks that I have seen on various investment channels, investment groups, watch lists, etc. Remember, you have to develop your own list of stocks and do your homework. This slide I highlighted in episode number 15, so please watch that video. And here are some additional resources to help you in your investment research. I like Pete Nigerian's daily video, The Take, and I like John Nigerian's 3 at 3 daily video where he discusses unusual options activity. Well, that's it. Time flies when you're having fun. Having fun making money, that is. Let's hope January ends on an up note. More videos are coming and stick around for 10 seconds more as I share some interesting facts about supply side economics and one of our favorite presidents of all time, Ronald Reagan. When it comes to acting presidential, Ronald Reagan was the best. Supply side economics is a macroeconomic theory that postulates economic growth can be most effectively fostered by lowering taxes decreasing regulation, and allowing free trade. According to supply-side economics, consumers will benefit from greater supplies of goods and services at lower prices, and employment will increase. A basis of supply-side economics is the Laffer Curve, a theoretical relationship between rates of taxation and government revenue. The Laffer Curve suggests that lowering the tax rates will boost government revenue through higher economic growth. Many people equate supply-side economics with Reaganomics. Ronald Reagan made supply-side economics a household phrase and pushed for reductions in income tax rates and reductions in capital gains tax rates. Congress under Reagan passed a plan that would slash taxes by $749 billion over five years. For me personally, Reaganomics could also be called common sense economics. Just look at the four pillars of Reaganomics. Reduce federal income and capital gains taxes. Well, yeah, that makes sense. Reduce federal spending. Well, yeah, that makes sense too. Reduce government regulation. Well, that makes sense. Let businesses run their business. Tighten the money supply to reduce inflation. Well, that really makes sense. Look what happens when the government just starts printing money and sending everyone checks. We get 7% inflation. You have to watch this short video clip of the presidential debate between Ronald Reagan and Walter Mondale during the 1984 debate, one of the all-time greatest debate quotes. You can rely on the old man's money. You can rely on the old man's money. Money music. Hall of Notes. Rich Girl. Daryl Hall and John Oates are an American pop duo formed in Philadelphia in 1970. Daryl Hall is the lead vocalist and John Oates primarily plays electric guitar and provides backup vocals. The two write most of the songs they perform and achieve their greatest fame from the mid-70s to the late 80s with the fusion of rock and roll and rhythm and blues. The duo reached the U.S. Top 40 with 29 of their 33 singles charting on the Billboard's Hot 100 between 1974 and 1991. Six of these peaked at number one, including Rich Girl, in 1977. Disclaimer! I am not a financial advisor. This video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. And I really hope you enjoyed this video. I am only sharing my experiences and opinions. Investing involves risk, so please, please seek advice and educate yourself.